Hello everyone, this is Angela from BeginningGenealogist.com. How are you doing today? Today I want to talk about making that first step to start to record your data and to store your information. Now, what does that mean exactly? Basically, when you're going to start to make that first attempt to start to write down materials, you want to be able to organize your data. And there's some forms, simple forms that you can use, and I'm going to put examples of these forms right on the website so you can download them at no cost to you so you can see what I'm talking about. As you record your information that you collect, whether you go to the National Archives, whether you are getting data from vital records, maybe you're sitting down and trying to organize facts from your oral history interviews, there's going to be information that you want to capture. And I want you to think of two types of, of forms to use are two types of examples in which you're going to be able to share your information with your family. Two types of documents, pedigree charts and family group sheets. Now, a pedigree. Many times people hear the word pedigree for the first time when they're growing up and they think about getting a pet. You think of getting a, a cat or a dog that has a pedigree. Well, a pedigree basically is a documented lineage reflecting exclusively direct ancestors going straight up one line. So what does that mean exactly? That means that you're going to try and capture data in one sense, straight up your own line in terms of your own parentage, meaning capturing your parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents, and so on. But I want you to remember something, and the best way to remember this is actually to illustrate it for you. Get a pen and paper and write down the following. Write your name, then underneath that, draw two lines and write your parents' names. Underneath those two lines, draw four more lines. Write the names of each of your grandparents, meaning the parents of your father and the parents of your mother. Draw eight lines under that and write the names of the parents of each of your grandparents. Do you notice a pattern? In other words, as you go back up your direct ancestry, your number of direct ancestors doubles. You have two parents, four grandparents, eight great-grandparents, 16 great-great, 32 great-great-great, and so on. Each generation, the number of direct ancestors doubles. And to an extent, you're going to start to capture that information, and you want to be able to fill in those blanks. Now, as opposed to making sort of a, a hand-drawn pedigree chart, there's some blank ones that are there for you that can easily help you put them in a certain order that you can certainly follow a particular line if you wish, and you can download those. There's another kind of data sheet that I want you to take a look at, too, and that's a family group sheet. Your parents had a family. Each of your parents had a family. They had parents. They maybe have had siblings if they were not an only child. Well, those siblings also then had their own lives. They had a spouse. They had children. So you want to be able to capture them as well. Keep in mind that although in one sense you are following a direct lineage, but that's not exclusively what you do. What you want to do is to be able to tell the story. And to be able to tell a story, it's going to be essential that you get all of the players documented, which is why you need this other kind of document known as the family group sheet. This is where you're going to put your own siblings with your parents as the head of, of the family. This is where you're going to put your cousins because they are the children of the siblings of your parents. This is where you're going to put your aunts and uncles or your great aunts and uncles and where their children, your second and third cousins, are going to appear on those sheets. Now, I, I still want you to start out by putting it on paper. 
There are software programs that can easily do this for you, and they're wonderful. I use them myself. But it's very important that you become really acquainted with how the data is organized. And the best way to become acquainted is to get really personal with it. Get that pencil, get that paper. Notice I said pencil and not a pen. That's primarily because sometimes, especially, you may find that a grandparent had a sibling, perhaps, that you never knew. And also keep in mind every generation that you go back, you're putting down some names that you may have already captured. You have your grandparent as a parent to your own mom or dad, but your grandmother or your grandfather was also a child of someone else. So that grandparent is going to appear as a child on a family group sheet with siblings with other parents, great-grandparents, as the head of that house. So it's a way for you to understand that every individual also has their own personal story, which is why particularly I want you to think about the potential of taking your stories off and going in incredible directions. But it's very important that you consider what you're doing is twofold. You're going, yes, straight up a line, your own personal line, but you're also going to be spreading out. You want to tell your parents' story. You want to tell your mother's story in relation to her siblings. You want to tell your dad's story in relation to his siblings. And then, of course, you want to tell your dad's story in relation to his parents or your grandfather's story in relation to his parents. You see all of these stories that are there. It's like... Uh, just a mushroom cloud. It just, just really just takes on a life of itself. But by capturing this information and putting them on these sheets, and I want you to download and print them, make as many copies as you need. Trust me, you will need many copies. These pieces of information also go in that same filing system, in that same file folder that you have, or they also go in a separate sheet protector as well, along with your binding system that you may have if you're using that system. So it's very, very important to understand that. Get started now capturing the data. I said use a pencil at first because that information is going to change. You may talk to an older sibling, jot down some information, two or three days later you talk to a parent or maybe an older sibling of a parent and you're going to be surprised. You're going to get some new names that you never heard before and you're going to, oh, let me erase that, let me change that. Ah, no wonder she said use a pencil and not a pen. Well, eventually all of this information can be entered electronically on a database program and I could talk about those a little bit later. This is just that initial start, just to get you started to, started to record that data for the first time. This is an incredible adventure you're about to embark on, and I hope you have fun as you start to fill out those pedigree charts and as you start to fill out those family group sheets. Don't worry about the blank spaces. You're going to have blank spaces. But sometimes those blank spaces are good. You know why? Because many people will ask the question, oh my gosh, where am I going to start? Well, you're going to start where those blank spaces are. So there are many, 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 many things that you're about to learn on your family. Enjoy the journey. Keep in mind, genealogy is a journey not a destination. Have fun. Start filling out those sheets. Go to the website and download some of them and have a good time. See you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.